Item two, communication from the chair. Honorable members, I want to welcome you to this morning's sitting. And I received a letter from the Katikiro of Uganda inviting parliament for the annual Kabaka birthday run, which is slated for 7th April 2024. And that run is meant to collect money for intervention of HIV AIDS. And I want to invite the honorable members that let's support the kingdom. Let's go and see how we can support the kingdom. We'll lead the team to go there on Tuesday. Let's go and support. And as parliament, we need to support because the cause is a good cause. So, Section 14 of the Public Finance Management Act. I therefore wish to guide as follows. One, the sectoral committees will commence reporting the ministerial policy statements on Tuesday, 2nd April, in the House 
and the statutory deadline is 20th April, meaning that everything will have been completed by 20th April. Two, upon consideration of the reports of the sectoral committees, the ministerial policy statements, the budget committee will require to reconcile the ministerial statements with the budget that is going to be laid today and harmonize it, consolidate the budget estimates contained in the reports of the sectoral committees and report back to this house not later than 15. We should be able, I mean 10th May. The budget should be ready by 10th May. The House will supply that budget for financial year 2024-2025 and consider the appropriation on the 16th of May. Any finances on board and the government chief whip. Honorable members, I received a letter of dated 15th May 2024 from the Minister of Public Service. Honorable Wilson Orol Mukasa requesting to withdraw two bills that were part of the rationalization process. That is the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2023 and the tribunal, National Tribunal Bill 2023. This letter serves as a notice of intention to withdraw the bills as stipulated under Rule 141 of the Rules of Procedure. In furtherance to Rule 142 of the Rules of Procedure, I will invite the minister to move a motion to withdraw the, the bills immediately after the communication. Honorable members, as you may be aware, that Section 8 of the Public Finance Management Act requires the Minister of Finance as part of the objectives of achieving the Charter of Fiscal Responsibility to table to Parliament the tax and revenue bills, which give government power to obtain money to finance the budget. The bills are supported, are supposed to be introduced for the first reading today, pursuant to Section 1301A of the Public Finance Management Act. So the Minister will be introducing the bills. And remember, it is out of those bills that we are going to get money to fund our budget. I will do, therefore vary the order paper to accommodate the tabling of the tax bills for the first reading. Honorable members, as part of the Holy Week celebrations, the Parliamentary Anglican Chaplaincy has organized the Easter carols this evening at 4 p.m. in the conference hall. You are all most welcome to join for the Easter carols. I want to thank you so, so much. And I want to thank you for coming. Yes, uh, Nathan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And there is a procedural matter. Are you also on procedure? Yes, please. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I am sorry to come in at this particular time, but by virtue of my year, years I've spent here, I am having a problem. Especially Uganda as a country, we have been blessed by having brilliant people. That post of permanent secretary and PST has always been occupied by very, very high level people. And up to now, I can tell you, the late Robert Ekinu was there. The man who governed the Bank of Uganda, you remember? Kasami, Mahakanizi, and even Gobinao. But when one of the, when, when a PSST goes into a committee of parliament and says that we have no role to play in the budget 
and appropriation. It defeats my understanding. Has this country changed? Because Article 155 gives us all the powers. A few minutes ago, you were enumerating the roles you were supposed to play. Members of uh, parliament have. Uh, let me first have the lights on. Why are they switching off? Because you're talking about appropriation. Can we have the lights on? I can assure you, Madam Speaker, members have been very keen and every year in and out to attend sector committees to consider the budget. But every budget, what, whatever we approve, does not come to reality. And when the APS said, we have no role in appropriation, I don't see why we're wasting our time going into the budget. It doesn't make sense. Because parliament, this, this, this government is anchored on three pillars, parliament, executive, and judiciary. We should be respecting each other. Every year in, whatever we say, don't spend money on this. It will be spent in the 30%. Madam, eh? 3%. Every year in, even if it has gone very far, I have seen a paper where you have said parliamentary budget will be cut by 50%. Why does such a person get powers? The minister is here, Amanda. I'm happy. The minister is here. I respect you. But there is a rule that we must respect each other. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. We have been demeaned to nothing. I have been in six parliament, seven parliament. Even the budget, budget act was a private member's bill. Thank you. Thank you, honorable member and senior. Madam Speaker, the issue of the PSST must be handled very seriously. In the Committee of Education, we summoned this man, and he refused to appear. And the Honorable Minister of Finance had to ring him when we were together. He still refused. And even recently, the Committee of PAC, chaired by Honorable Mwanga Chibumbi, was, some, was invited. He refused. He doesn't respect the members of parliament and the committees of parliament. And they want this to be put on record. Yet, he's the issuing officer of any funds of government. I was in the park for some time at Damascus Square together. You remember, you could never invite here the lady uh, 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 Mahakanizi. He could appear at any time parliament would invite him in a committee. But he, Mr. Ramadan Gobi, I don't know where he gets his strength and powers from, but I, once you remove appropriation from parliament, then what are we doing here? We are rendered null and void. We are not useful here. So, Madam Speaker, under your leadership, we needed to take a stand firm position on the PSST. Otherwise, it doesn't respect the parliament. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So, thank you, colleague. I think, in short, I don't know how we can handle it. I think we need an apology, a sincere apology to this house. We cannot continue coming here and be demeaned. Members are running like chicken, you know, that is chicken going to the committees here and there. But forget to see even what can come to their constituencies. Then you want to take over our powers? I think I am really constrained. Thank you. Uh, let me first hear from... Minister of Finance, is there some sabotage? Right. Honorable members, the issue that Honorable Honorable Nathan is raising is a very important issue. I want to refer you to Article 156 of the Constitution in regard to appropriation bill. And then I refer you to section 14 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015. 
that is approval of annual budget by parliament. If, they, if parliament did not have any role in this process, then everything would be done from wherever it is done, and then we get information like any other person. But the parliament of Uganda has four roles. Appropriation, most importantly. Oversight, representation, and legislation. So if anybody wants to take over the powers of parliament, we got these powers here, and we must leave them here. There are no, no technical person should come and take over the powers that are for this parliament. Can we hear from the chairman where, who was told off? Right honorable speaker, I thank you. Right Honorable Speaker, this issue arose during an interaction where we were interrogating government handling of consolidated accounts. Right Honorable Speaker, let me give Parliament some facts. We noted as a committee of public accounts that much as consistently government has been coming here with a budget of 52 trillion, 40, 48 trillion, 54 trillion, we made a trend analysis for the last five years. And the budget actual expenditure of government, matching revenue and expenditure, has never exceeded 45 trillion. And then we asked the PSST, what's the essence of them? You consistently coming during a budget process, presenting it to a country, a of picture of some 51, 52, 53 trillion. Well knowing not in any single year since the history of this country, have you ever spent above 45 trillion? The simple understanding is they balloon the budget to 52 and gives a yield on the 3%, which, which they do a secondary appropriation of their own. In, on day one, first July of a financial year, disregarding the budget process. They go to the extent of... Uh, 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 Honorable uh, Chair, you are raising a very important issue. But first of all, we need to first understand, do we have the powers? Okay? You first, you first leave that point. Yeah. We want first understand from the Minister of Finance, that what is the use of you bringing your, your budget here when we have no powers? And you as a member of parliament, is that how you're going to allow this institution to continue being humiliated? Can we say that we are not receiving the budget because we don't have the powers? Yes. He might, and where the minister made the statement that we don't have the powers. Okay. Then later on, he accused parliament and lawmakers, saying that the distortion from the difference between the budget framework paper and the actual budget is always a distortion of, of, of lawmakers, of decision makers. That's when then he said, you don't even enjoy those powers to do what you are doing. Have you finished, uh, Nathan? Nathan was still speaking. Me, what I was saying, it is not even this financial year, every financial year. But I can tell you, the previous parliaments no, were on charge. And I want us to have to be in charge of doing things we are entitled to do. One single person, by, for example, by a committee inviting the PSST and it does not come. You, you know what it means? Me, I feel that we need a serious apology so that from today, we know that each particular department of government has its own duty and you cannot even usurp other people's powers. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, this morning, I was listening to the PSST on NBS TV. And he was actually, they were discussing this matter. 
And what he said is that parliament has no power of budgeting, that that is an executive function. And he said that parliament has no powers to move money from one vote to, to another. Because budgeting for this country is not our responsibility. That it is the executive's responsibility. And it is the executive that knows uh, the priorities of this country. So what is our role as a parliament, right honorable speaker? I thought ours is to scrutinize this budget and as a people's representative, move money where we feel that should be the focus. So if we see money being, uh, you know, placed in areas that are not a priority, we need roads, for example, and then we find money being placed in other things, maybe uh, mchaka mchaka mindset change and all that. When, when we, we have, have roads, where, 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 when, when people, people have, have no water, water where, where, should should our, where, where should we as a people's representative, what should our role be in this budgeting process? It is like the PSST is saying, that we are here to rubber stamp. And in conclusion, he said, we can only recommend, but we should not touch the budget once it is presented. Yes, the way it is, that was what he was referring to. So right, Honorable Speaker, that's the information that I wanted to give Honorable Yanyam. And the challenge we have in this country is picking people who have not grown into public service and placing them into such sensitive positions. Because the PSST, previously used to rise from down, move up to the undersecretary, move up until he becomes a PSST. Now, when you pick somebody from somewhere, they don't respect leaders. They don't respect uh, people. Honorable Spend members, right to speak. Honorable members there, is, there is a difference between formulation and consideration and approval. When you look at Article 155, the financial year estimates, when you look at one, it says the president shall cause to be prepared and laid before parliament. Cause to be prepared and laid before parliament in each financial year. But in any case, not less than the 15th day before the commencement of the financial year. And when you look at 155.4, it says at any time before parliament, considers the estimates of revenue and expenditure laid before it or by an authority, the president and appropriation committee of parliament may discuss and review the estimates and make appropriate recommendations. Yes. Yours is to formulate, give us to review, make changes to Parliament and approve. Yes. Ma Madam Speaker, I agree with the members who have raised these matters. And I do not know the exact words the PSST used and where he made those words. But let Honorable me. Honorable Minister of, uh, of uh, Constitutional Affairs, can we first hear from finance? I don't want you to carry a burden which is not yours. No, I don't want you to carry a burden which is not yours. Finance. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker. To the best of my knowledge and experience. As a member of parliament. As a member and, of parliament. And a chairperson of the finance committee. Who worked in the finance committee for the and 10 now, years. And now is a minister. And budget committee. And all other related committees. To the best of my knowledge, appropriation powers rests with the parliament. That's why you're, you're a very good minister. If 
the PSST expressed his views and opinion. We are not privy. I am not privy to what the PSST said, but I know the PSST does not have a chance to speak on this microphone. I would like to invite colleagues to disregard what the PSST said. We should always take what we say as Minister of Finance on this microphone. If whatever he said, wherever he said so, offended a committee of parliament or, or parliament in general, I would like to apologize on his behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, and even as you apologize, please pass the message to the PSST on what he said that it is not correct. Can I have a commitment from the Minister of Constitutional Affairs that will always protect this constitution, uphold it, and not bring personal feelings? Uh, ma Madam Speaker, there are people who have expressed contemptuous opinions of this House historically. I was in this parliament when the late governor, having been summoned to talk about fiscal policy, said he has no time to talk about fiscal policy and monetary matters with potato growers. Yes. So th this, this seems to be part of uh, the, 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 our society. But Madam Speaker, Laws are non-negotiable. Fortunately, they are written. There's something we call contempt of parliament. You have seen how the judiciary has been very tough on those who have acted contemptuously of the institution of the judiciary. Others have even been sent to jail. You, honorable colleagues, have on occasion sent some people to the basement for misbehaving and the abusing the privileges of parliament. It's not that the contempt is against you individually, but it's against the people of Uganda, because this is the only institution which represents everybody. The other ones are not as representative. This is really the people's house. So it's up to you, Madam Speaker, to draw a red line, which nobody should cross without consequence, and it will be within the law. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Uh, 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 Government Chief, Will, let's resolve this thing of, uh, of the budget. For me, I am here on the budget first. Government Chief, Whip, our deduction of 50%. Shall we be paid salary? You even have the cutters to put it in bold on a statutory report. Finance. You even have a cutters to put in bold a statutory vote that parliament should not get money. Can I hear from the government chief? And we need a commitment that you, you will always protect the institution of parliament. <laughs> I'm right on the speaker. In addition to laws being <clears throat> non-negotiable, laws are interpreted as they are. And I have addressed my mind to the provision of Chapter 9 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda as amended, which is on finance. When you look at Article 152 on taxation, Parliament has a responsibility. Article 153 on the Consolidated Fund, Parliament has a responsibility. Article 154 on the Withdrawal from the Consolidated Fund, Parliament has a responsibility. Article 155 on the Financial Year's Estimates, Parliament has a responsibility. 
Article 156 on appropriation bill, Parliament has a mandate. Article 157 on contingencies fund, Parliament has a mandate. Right Honorable Speaker, I may have nothing useful to add, but simply to state that the laws made must be interpreted as they are the Constitution, the Public Finance Management Act, that should be read together with the rules of procedure of Parliament. On the question of the budget, I believe that all of us, even as ministers, we are primarily paid as members of Parliament. In principle, we are paid as members of Parliament in principle. And therefore, we have an obligation. And under the same constitution, you cannot vary whatever one has been receiving to his or her disadvantage. That becomes unconstitutional under our Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. I beg to submit. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable Chibumi, are you finished? Mm. Madam Speaker, on the issue of the PSST, the minister here, who has just gone out, he was talking casually, and he, he said he was he's not aware of what happened, where he said it, but a member was in the committee of parliament. The chair of the committee is here. Madam Speaker, under our rules, there is a procedure we use to bring those people to make apologies public to the parliament seated before you. And that's why we have those two bars. The business of this, this gentleman are growing the I know what happened between him and Onomi Ingo in the Committee of Education about the same issue. So I don't agree, and I would beseech you, Madam Speaker, that this big man, who is the PSST, should appear before members of parliament and he pull out the bus, he apologizes to this house. Otherwise, ministers, you have heard my former president here, uh, 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 Nobati Mao, he was giving references of the sixth parliament, but in the end, we are the eleventh parliament with different members. We are not there by then. Uh, but he, this business of continuing building members of parliament by a person, I beg to move a motion that this member, the PSST, should appear in person before parliament and apologize as the honorable member requested. Madam Speaker, I move. And the members, I request you to support me. Honorable members, honorable members, it's good the responsible minister has given an apology on behalf. And this should be the fir uh, first and last. This should be the first and last. And um, I am also going to write. I am going to write to PSST and tell him to respect the committees of parliament and honorable chairs of committees make use of rule 208 the special powers of a committee make use of it by the time we come you will have taken an action we wouldn't be discussing this if you had taken an action use your powers Yes, uh, Commissioner. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I uh, listened to the Honorable Chair of the Committee of Public Accounts Central, and I think along the way we lost a key point he was raising because he was asked to, uh, to wait uh, on his submission. Now that today we are receiving um, the final budget figures, he made an allusion to the fact that um, we receive budget figures that have no relationship with what we finally spend. He made a very critical allusion to the 3% and how it is abused because 3% of 57, you know, the same as 3% of 45. Honorable Musasizi. I don't know I whether you, the Minister of Finance is you're getting what is you're able to respond 
or probably the right honorable speaker, ask the Honorable Chivumbi to resubmit on that very critical matter because it's a very, very serious, serious matter. It touches on the property of the Minister of Finance and how it can easily mislead the Ugandans into what actually they are dealing with. Because if they lay a budget of 57, 51 trillion, yet in actual sense, we have never even utilized 50, but again, you utilize 3% or 51, there's a problem. And right now, speaker, in the same breath, probably would need to get an update as parliament as to what became of the amendment bill to the PFMA, which was intended again to address some of these very critical matters, including the abuse of 3%. Right now, speaker, if with your indulgence, would allow the Honorable Chivumbi to make that point with further clarity so that the Minister of Finance can respond to Parliament. Uh, maybe Honorable Chivongi could make a, a clarification. Information, then uh, no. what... Honorable Musan, since this is very good for you, you need to get what members feel. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, as, as I earlier explained, we are into a budget process. We've made a trend analysis of the performance of actual revenue and actual expenditure over the last five years. Right, Honorable Speaker, our revelation is that the budget has never performed on actual beyond 45 trillion. Therefore, in economic modeling, which they have experts, it's imprudent of an agency for specific planning to come up consistently with a figure that is over and above your traditional performing level. And therefore, when they come to parliament with a budget now of 54 or 52, they are sure they will never raise revenue and actually perform beyond 45. So what's the essence of engaging parliament in the very elaborate process of budgeting for 52, 54 trillion, when actually they are sure they will raise around 44, 45, and that is from borrowed money and revenue collection. The whole essence of it is that they will apply the 3% on an artificial figure. Which 3% will now give them around 1.5 trillion, which immediately after passing our budget, they, they will sit in another review. They call it repurposing. They use the word repurposing or suppressing. That's why they suppress those budgets we are talking about and suppress and repurpose a budget and yield 1.5, where they will now take on powers of parliament to appropriate, including items that we traditionally have rejected. So as we embark on a budget process, right honorable speaker, I intend to bring here a statement on consolidated account and on uh, treasury operations before we make the reports. But uh, actually, the actually, you need to unpack vote 130. Yes, I have already. And the report is nearly ready. And I think by next week, we can present that report. That report will tell us, since we have been budgeting without real impact, what is happening. But what is that critical now is this big statement here has an artificial figure, which the Minister of Finance knows he will never raise other than raising 3%. So why do you consistently take Parliament and the country to a very rosy garden where you are sure you will never fulfill? That's the issue, right, Honorable Speaker. There's information from Katesh. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I think uh, to resolve this matter, we need to first track the amendment of the PFMA. Because, Madam Speaker, while we are going to listen to the budget estimates today, what what happened to this? To uh, yes, a minute. Let's find out what happened. Right, right Honorable Speaker, today this morning I met the a committee headed by our legal team on the PFMA. The Minister of Finance has responded. Actually, days have passed, the 60 days. They have packed, they have responded on the usual letter of financial implications. 
but they are in the letter they've written to you and to the clerk to the clerk to parliament and then copied it to you and to me is that they were lagging they were they were, they, failed, they have failed to give a certificate of financial implication by virtue of that right honorable speaker i'm ready even on tuesday to to bring this amendment for the first reading so they brought uh, the the they wrote back after seven studies the, no, they wrote they wrote a letter saying this the 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 that the amendment has a financial implication on contingency fund but the solicitor general they even wrote to the solicitor general tax them to unpack and give the detail of the implication of, of financial implication, which they did not do. So as of now, the letter they wrote us is the material. And the days are passed. We can now move as parliament and consider that amendment. OK, Honorable Katesh. Yeah, Madam Speaker, the budget is a function of income and expenditure. The estimates we are going to receive today are assuming and are projecting the expected income, including revenues, including uh, borrowing, source but of the source of, uh, of uh, revenue. And Madam Speaker, one of the sources, as we know, is from the tax measures that the minister is going to table at the same time. Along the way, as we consider the tax bills, this house has always looked at them and some of them have been struck down. But when they are struck down, the estimates that would have been estimated from those measures are never revised from the budget. So this calls into the question of the way we synchronize this budgeting process. And this is why we think that, I think that the amendment of the PFMA will help us try and tie the loose ends. Because if you have a measure of the, the, the tax bills estimated to generate, say, one trillion, and half of them are struck down by this house, but you have already confirmed the figures of the budget, and there is no mechanism for the minister to go back and revise the budget, then it leaves us with that uh, you know, gap that is not closed. So I think the House needs to consider the amendments to the PFMA as quickly as possible so that we tie these loose ends and make sure that the process we are doing is credible and is meaningful. I beg to submit. Honourable Minister of Finance, we need uh, a certificate of financial implication on that. And if you cannot give, then we'll proceed. Because if you're saying it has a financial implication, to what extent? Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, on the Public Financial Management Act amendment, I am of the opinion that we harmonize. We are also beginning to consider various amendments in the same act. Also, led by Honorable Chivumbi, our colleagues here think there are areas where we need to make changes. I would like to humbly appeal to this House and its colleagues that we initiate the process of harmonization so that we come back here. Honor, when Honorable we are Minister, all you may need you may not even need to harmonize. If you I know you also want an amendment to the Public Finance Management Act. And if you know that it is in good faith. You can even take over the, 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 the amendment, I mean the bill. You can take it over as government. Because now you claim it has it affects Article 93. Madam Speaker, 
I do agree with you. I, however, personally believe in first things first. Madam Speaker, considering the season we are in, can I beg that we deal with the budget? And then in July we can I, I like process. I like the way you you you've taken over the house uh, as the speaker, but uh, what Honorable Chivombi is saying is very important. We need to sit down and see how we work on the Public Finance Management Act. Honorable members in the public gallery this morning, we have students and teachers of Serenity High School from Wakiso District, represented by Honorable Wakaima. Honorable Wakaima, where are you? That's a very good boy. Honorable Wakaima. And uh, he's a very good uh, member of parliament. Please bring him back. And Honorable, uh, that one is the best. welcoming them on behalf of the two MPs. Uh, Honourable members. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Firstly, I want to appreciate the call to colleagues uh, to participate in the Kawaka's birthday run. Um, I did go with uh, a couple of members yesterday and other leaders to purchase birthday kits. So I want to join you in rallying the members. And I'm glad you requested the government chief whip and uh, Honorable Mao here, who is the Msajawa Kawaka in one way or the other, to, to rally colleagues. So I encourage colleagues to purchase the kits and be part of... Uh, the run, whose theme is a critical one this year. They're encouraging the men, especially, to step up in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Right, Honorable Speaker, away from that, two critical issues, uh, right, Honorable Speaker. Uh, uh, somebody, don't, you're distorting, <laughs> but uh, he says, uh, the chairperson, Buganda Parliamentary Group, says that the caucus has voted for all members of parliament. We are not going as bias we are going to support the course as sponsors we want to go as parliament and as sponsors not to buy it but we want to thank you for buying for us i'm still waiting for mine to be delivered thank you right honorable speaker that's a very welcome cause as uh, we are saying uh, right honorable speaker two critical issues um on february 29th we were here in Parliament, and KCCA casual laborers were protesting on the outside because their salaries, you did meet them, and uh, you promised to meet KCCA leaders. KCCA leaders, that meeting did happen. And uh, right, Honorable Speaker, in that meeting, KCCA leadership committed to pay all the arrears by 6th March. Right, Honorable Speaker, these casual laborers were protesting again this time round at the KCC offices yesterday because today is 28th and this money has not been paid yet, right, Honorable Speaker? These casual laborers, they've got families too. They've got children for whom to pay school fees. I don't know why we are not prioritizing this issue because government then seems to be telling lies because in that meeting which you chaired, they committed that on 6th, March, they will pay all the arrears, but it has not happened yet. I think it would be important for this house to get feedback because we get calls from these casual laborers that are saying, please help us. You know, we, we are struggling. Our children are being sent away from school over little money. We don't know why government is refusing to take care of this issue. Hopefully they'll respond. The second and last issue, right, Honorable Speaker, is regarding um, the ministerial policy statements. Firstly, Rule 149, as uh, you did allude, provides for the deadline within which the committees can process the policy statements. That's April 20th. Today, right, Honorable Speaker, you have uh, called us 
to lay the alternative ministry policy statements for which we are ready to do. But we understand some committees are already signing reports. Members have been called and they are signing reports. The, the challenge with that then is the alternatives don't get to be captured because if you're signing already, then what, what's the essence of the alternative ministerial policy statements? The essence was they get to be sent to the sectoral committees, they are processed as well, and value gets to be added to the ministerial policy statements. But that does not seem to be the case. And yet, we have got a bit of time for that to happen. Relatedly, some ministries, right, Honorable Speaker, when they were laying the ministerial policy statements, they only laid for some entities and not all. For example, Ministry of Finance, which we have been talking about extensively this morning, did not lay for all the entities under them. And yet their deadline already passed. We don't know what their plan is. Maybe they will share with us. But also, some ministerial policy statements were laid without estimates. And it's coming through in the various committees. In fact, some ministries have been sent away by, by these committees. So I think it would be good that we get some kind of guidance, right, Honorable Speaker, on how we deal with these issues so that the committees are not struggling on their end and yet there are critical issues to be dealt with. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. To the best of my knowledge, finance laid all the ministerial policy statements here. And then when you look at Rule 147, the alternative policy statements, the shadow minister may submit the alternative policy statement to Parliament by 29th day of March uh, of February. And, uh, and you have them. You're ready to submit them. And the essence of us sending these documents to the committees, sectoral committees, is for, is for them to do scrutiny. When they scrutinize, harmonize, they will be able to interact with those institutions. Where there is need to, for a correction, they will do it there. And then the issue of um, the issue of uh, others are writing reports, others are ready, actually. I have realized some committees are ready. That's why on Tuesday we shall start receiving them. And then we send them to <clears throat> to the Budget Committee for Harmonization. Honorable members, the issue of KCCA, the money paid to these people is very little money. And if these people are demonstrating, I don't think these people even have sticks. They just walk. The other day they walked up to the gate here. I addressed them we agreed on a way forward. I called the ED. The ED said she had started making payments. Yesterday, I had a, me a meeting with the PSST, with the Honorable Musasisi, with the Honorable Kasai, uh, the Minister of Finance. He said they had released the money, the final money yesterday. I don't know, is that true or is Madam Speaker, it is true all the money required has been released to KCCA and I'm sure KCCA will do the payment plan and pay all the beneficiaries. But then also, Honorable Minister of Concession Affairs, much as these people were demonstrating, they were just walking, asking for their money. Did they need to Tiagas and beat people like somebody was beating. There's some picture that was moving around, how somebody was brutally handled. Was that required for? Please. Madam Speaker, this, this is a, a human rights issue. And today we are on the order paper also to lay on table our action taken report. It's uh, illegal to use that kind of force. 
first and foremost, from my own observation for the duration that I've spent in that office, I've found that the absence of regulations to the Public Order Management Act gives the police too much discretion. So we are in final stages to enact those regulations so that the discretion is reduced in order that the police do not violate the, the constitution. Right now, they only use the Mother Act and they think they have the right to give permission or to deny it. The truth of the matter is they can only regulate, they can tell demonstrators, this is the time you can demonstrate, this is where you can demonstrate, and this is how we shall offer you protection. So the solution lies in regulations, and we are in final stages of bringing those regulations. Honorable, Honorable Minister, kindly advise you before you cannot. Do you know how much those people suffer? They clean the streets. They are knocked very early in the morning. They have children. They, 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 they are not protected. And then when they come and claim for their 150,000, they, they are beaten. Tear gas is applied on them. I think we need to be fair to these people. We really need to be fair to these people. The people you're beating, the women you're beating, are either your mothers, your wives, your sisters. At the end of the day, we will not have voters. Those are our mothers. The other day they came and met us here in parliament. We didn't have any gun. And we were safe with those people. You don't need to treat those people like that. And the KCCA must also pay these people. They must pay these people. And this business of saying it is only one company that should work. There was a letter saying Bonaba Kole. They let all of them work. Where will they get jobs if you allow only one group? Let them work. Next. Next. I am here for a specific reason. A statutory deadline. Motion to withdraw bills. Honorable members, as you heard before, the minister, Dr. Muruli, Miss Honorable Muruli Mukasa, wrote a letter to me seeking for a withdrawal of the two bills. And uh, I don't see the minister here. Um, right, Honorable Speaker, I have spoken to the Honorable Muruli Mukasa, the Minister of Public Service, who is unwell at the moment, and he states that despite the fact that he had given notice to withdraw two bills, the Constitutional Amendment Bill and the National Tribunal Bill, there are still consultations going with the principal legal advisor of government, the Attorney General, and that will also culminate into consulting cabinet. Then he will come and give the final position whether the bills will be withdrawn or not withdrawn. In the circumstances, I pray that um, we defer this subject. Thank you. Honorable, honorable members, then what was the use of writing to the speaker? What was the use of writing to the speaker? Honorable member, Fox. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, we have rules that govern the processes of this house. Once a bill is read for the first time and committed to the committees, we have 45 days within which to handle the bill and report back to the House. Now, we are in a situation where the executive says we have withdrawn a bill and we have not withdrawn uh, a bill. There are consultations still ongoing. What do we do with our internal processes? 
And the right honorable speaker, I didn't want to use the unparliamentary word shabby, but I can't find any more polite word to describe this particular action. Is shabby, is shameful, and uh, I think the executive owes us an apology. I thank you, right honorable speaker. Thank you. Right honorable speaker, a notice, in my humble opinion, is different from a withdrawal. The Honorable Fox is asking, what should the internal processes be? Committees kindly proceed with the bills before you. Uh -uh. Honorable. <laughs> Honorable, honorable, honorable government chief whip. I act, I do act for and on behalf of this house. When the letter is written to me, it is written to this house. And when it is written to the house, that, that was the basis of us putting on the order paper. I know you as a very organized person, very, very organized. Don't allow somebody's being shabby to spoil you. Because there is no other word that you can use. Government Chief Whip is a very organized person. Maybe, maybe Doug needs to advise us on this. Doug. Thank you. Mr. Speaker and colleagues, it is indeed a, an interesting situation. My boss, uh, the government chief whip, has made his point hard. The Minister of Public Service, the principal mover, took a decision to write to the speaker. And like uh, the chief whip has said, there are consultations ongoing. Now, what happens in the circumstances is that the speaker being the custodian of the rules of procedure of this house can take a decision based on what she has in her possession. She has both the bills and the letter. The letter communicating an intent or intention to withdraw. If Please, let me speak. Right, General Speaker, in the premises, in the premises, if the mover of the bill, the Minister of Public Service, is done with consulting us, the Office of the Attorney General, and if a final decision is taken to have the bills withdrawn, he will come physically and do so. Be that as it may, the speaker is the custodian of the rules. You take the decision. Thank you. Sure. So I should take the decision to withdraw the bill? Honorable members, let's for once take this house seriously. If you feel you are not ready for rationalization, for us as a house, we are, we are ready. If you are not ready for rationalization, for us, we are ready. I don't know why you're withdrawing your bills, you bring and you withdraw. So if you're withdrawing the bill, again, you say, I'm writing another letter to cancel the original one. Cancel Mutembule. Let me first hear from the chairman, Lego. Uh, thank you very much. Handling the bill. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we don't want to be seen that we are such a lazy committee, committee. Mm. when such ping pong things begin. We are aware of what has happened to legal aid caused by the same office of Attorney General. Again, it has started. Madam Speaker, the bills are before us as a committee. And unless we get 
a directive from the speaker to stop us from proceeding. We shall proceed and give our, our report. Whether good or bad, it will be our report. Madam Speaker, we feel that's what we should do so that we don't have any backlog as far as our committee is concerned. That is our position as a committee. Honorable Chair of Lego and the Committee of Lego, continue with the, with the report and bring it as it is, good or bad. Whichever. Next item. Honorable members in the public gallery this morning, we have Students Guild Council of Al Mashafa Islamic College from Wakiso District, represented by none other than Honorable Medad Lubega Segona. You have a very brilliant member of parliament. And that one is a, a no-go area. And then Honorable Naluima Betty Ethel. That one is a mother. So you have very good members of parliament. The respect of the party, but they are good. Yes. I I I have a procedural matter. Yesterday I saw Uganda police giving a report of their performance of Exodus uh, Sako. And the, there is a lot of complaint, and this matter has been handled several times before this floor of parliament, of police officers not getting what they want from their Sako, from their savings at the right time. And if the Sako is performing very well, how does it fail to give police officers what is saved by them at the time they want it? Madam Speaker, Minister of Internal Affairs has the minister, both of them are senior soldiers in the army. The PS is a serving soldier in the army. UPDF circle is performing very well. But what happens, Madam Speaker, with the serving civil uh, office, army officers? They are bound by the oath of our agency. They can't complain to their senior officers. And I got a police officer before me complaining, once baptized these two children on Easter Monday, but he has gone to ask for money. He has saved under Exodus Sako so that he can make a good party for his children after being baptized. But they have denied him funds. Madam Speaker, I seek for your intervention in this matter so that it comes once and for all. If a Sako is getting dividends, is making profits, why is it refusing to give police officers who are earning 400000 per month to, from their savings? Sacos are supposed to look out, help me get what I need from my saving. But because they fear people wearing their collars on their officer uniform, these collared officers with the, uh, beeps, beeps, they are, they are fearing. Madam Speaker, I need you to help pass. You intervene in this matter because the issue of Exodus Sacco has come several times. But I don't Thank understand you. how a Sacco makes profits and fails to give its see, saving know. agency money. Honorable so, members. The ministerial policy statements and that's a policy issue and i want the committee of defense and internal affairs to look at that issue and then they will report back to the house the issue of exodus has always become exodus huh? so chair make sure that you make a follow-up on that next item Item 5, laying of papers, 5A, alternative policy statements for the financial year 2024-2025, pursuant to Rule 147 of the Rules of Procedure. Honorable members, as you may be aware that Rule 147 of the Rules of Procedure requires the Shadow Minister of Finance to submit alternative policy statements by 29th day of March. And 29th tomorrow being a, a Holy Friday, we may not have time, so we've decided to have it today. I therefore invite the leader of opposition to lead the shadow, cab, the shadow minister to lay the, 
the policy statement. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. I'll straight away go ahead and invite colleagues to begin to lay the alternative ministerial policy statement. Thank you. If you're a shadow minister of finance. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Oh, I was invited, but okay. allow me to play through you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, as I lay, allow me to appreciate you and Parliament for welcoming our children of Wakiso together with our community. Thanks so much Thank for you. giving them a very welcome. Thank you. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the alternative policy statement for public service and local government for the financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. The policy statement is referred to for harmonization. Harmonization in the Committee of Public Service and Local Government. Gender. Gender. Right, Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the alternative policy statement for gender, labor, and social development, financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Referred to the Committee of Gender. Thank you, Fortunate. Justice and Constitutional Affairs. Justice and Constitutional Affairs. Please help Helen. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I beg to lay the alternative budget policy statement for financial year 2024-2025 for Justice, Constitutional Affairs, Parliamentary Commission, and the Judiciary. I beg to learn. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. Presidency. Residence. I beg to lay the alternative policy statement for presidency, financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Presidential Affairs. Defense and Veteran Affairs. Yes, Madam Speaker. I beg to lay the alternative policy statement for defense and veteran affairs, financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you, Derek. Refer to the Committee of Defense and Internal Affairs. Frank. East African Community Affairs. East African. Eh. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Honourable Speaker. I beg to lay the alternative policy statement for the East African Community Affairs Sector for 2024-2025 financial year. I beg to lay. Thank you, Solo. <laughs> Refer to the Committee of East African Community Affairs. Education and Sports. Solo, have you laid or you're just keeping? Okay. <laughs> Education. Education. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Honorable Speaker. I beg to lay the alternative policy statement for education and the sports sector for financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you, Shadow Minister of Education. Refer to the Committee of Education and Sports. Energy. And minor development. Alan. By the way, Alan is a, a vice chairperson of Kosase. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Pascal for the young man. <laughs> uh, on behalf of uh, uh, the Shadow Minister, 
Honorable Kanyik Evans, I stand to lay the alternative policy statement for energy and mineral development. I beg to lay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Refer to the Committee of Environment and Natural Resources. 2024-2025. No, I'm it is 2024 2025. Finance, planning, and economic development. I beg to lay alternative policy statement for finance, planning, and economic development. Financial year 2024-2025, I beg to lay. Thank you. Joanne, refer to the Committee of Finance, Planning, and Economic Development. Foreign Affairs. Although it stopped disturbing my girl. Thank you very much, Vatan, our speaker. On behalf of the Foreign Affairs Minister, Honore Omwagan Kunyinji, Shadow for financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. Stands referred to Committee of Foreign Affairs for scrutiny and harmonization. Yes. Minister of Health. Health. Right Honorable Speaker, according to Rule 147 of our Rules of Procedure, I lay our alternative budget priorities in our alternative ministerial policy statement of the health sub-program, financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. I refer to the Committee of Health. Information and Communication Technology. I see too. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to lay the alternative policy statement for information, communications, and technology for financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you, Helen. Refer to the Committee of ICT and National Guide. Guidance. Internal Affairs. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. On behalf of the Shadow Minister for Internal Affairs, I beg to lay the alternative policy, policy statement for Internal Affairs Financial 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Defense and Internal Affairs. Lands, Housing, and Urban Development. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. On behalf of Honourable Tamaguzi, the Shadow Minister for Lands, Housing and Urban Development, I beg to lay the alternative policy statement for lands, housing and urban development for financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. I refer to the Committee of Fiscal Infrastructure, Agriculture and More Industry and Fisheries. Right Honourable Speaker. I beg to lay the alternative policy statement for agriculture, animal husbandry, animal industry, and fisheries sector. Financial year 2024-2025, I beg to lay. Thank you, Adieri. Re refer to the Committee of Agriculture, Fisheries, and... Next. Kampala Capital State Authority. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I beg to lay the political statement for KCCA and the Ministry of Kampala, Capital City, and Metropolitan Affairs for financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. I refer to the Committee of Presidential Affairs. 
Next, tourism, wildlife, and antiquities. Uh, thank you very much, right honorable speaker. I beg to lay the alternative policy statement for tourism, wildlife, and antiquities for the financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you, Karim. Refer to the Committee of Tourism, Trade, and Industry. Trade, Industry, and Cooperatives. Thank you very much, Dr. Honorable Speaker. On behalf of Honorable Manjie Chibaktika, who is the Shadow Minister for Trade, I raise to lay the alternative policy statement for trade, industry, and cooperatives for the financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Tourism, Trade and Industry. Water and Environment. Christine. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. And thank you for fast tracking climate change management in your communication. I beg to lay the alternative policy statement, Water and Environment, for the year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Environment and Natural Resources. Works and Transport. Min right, Honorable oh. Speaker, I beg to lay an alternative policy statement for works and transport sector for 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. Refer to the Committee of Fiscal Infrastructure. Item 5B, the proposed. Honorable Speaker, I want to appreciate my very able colleagues, the Shadow Cabinet Ministers, for the alternative ministerial policy statements. Um, and also to add, because um, as you did mention, Honorable Speaker, some reports are ready, some are signing already. I, I want to encourage committees to give time these alternative ministerial policy statements. There is good value herein uh, that will help our country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, that's why I've always asked you that let's have these documents laid earliest to help us, but it doesn't cost much for you to look at and harmonize what you have and what has been laid on the table so that we have inclusivity. Next. Item 5B, the proposed annual budget for the financial year 2024-2025, pursuant to Article 155 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, 1995, and Section 13, uh, 3, 9, 10, and 11 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015, and Rule 148 of the Rules of Procedure. Honorable Member, Section 13.3 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015 requires the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development to table a proposed annual budget for the subsequent financial year that by the first day of April. As the Minister prepares to table the proposed annual budget, I urge him to comply with the requirements of Section 13.9 10 and 11 of the Public Finance Management Act. I now want to invite the minister to, to lay the proposed annual budget for financial year 2024-2025. Right, Honorable Speaker and the honorable colleagues pursuant to article 155 of the constitution of the republic of uganda section 13 3 9 10 section 13 subsection 3 9 10 and 11 of the public finance management act 2015 and Rule 148 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, I beg to lay the proposed budget for financial year 
2025. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, in compliance with the law, I have accompanied the budget with the following documents, and I beg to lay them as follows. Number one is the appropriations bill. The, I beg to lay the appropriations bill 2024. I beg to lay. Please lay. Number two are the draft estimates. I beg to lay on table the draft estimates of revenue and expenditure, recurrent and development for financial year 2024-2025, local government votes. I beg to lay. Thank you, Ms. Lane. I beg to lay the draft estimates of revenue and expenditure, recurrent and development for financial year 2024-2025, central government votes. I beg to lay. Thank you. Madam Speaker, the central government's votes are in part one, covering vote 001 to vote 33, I beg to lay, and then part two, covering vote 144 to vote 538, I beg to lay. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I want to, can my technical team look for volume three, state-owned enterprises, as I continue? <laughs> Number three. <laughs> uh... Number three, Madam Speaker, I beg to lay the budgets for self accounting departments, commissions, and organizations set up under the constitution and the opinion of government on these budgets, except for judiciary where we have not received the budget from the accounting office. I beg to lay. Uh, thank you. You've not received the budget or? We have not yes. received the budget from the accounting office. So how uh, do you balance? That is why I've given an exception. Disclaimer. Yes. Have you got a reason why the, the accounting office has not given you the budget? Madam. You be, this is here. You Madam see. Speaker, <laughs> I have given information to this house to the extent possible. Honorable Fox. Uh, thank you very much, right, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Speaker, for purposes of... Before Honorable Fox comes in, could I confirm from uh, the chair, Lego, if the, 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 the minister, if, if they present it to you and he has the figures? The budget framework paper, and you know the... For, for judiciary. Uh, Madam, the, the ministerial policy statement. 
Madam Speaker, yesterday we interacted with judiciary, mm. and uh, there are a lot of issues between the PSST and I think the PS judiciary <clears throat> that uh, he received information in the morning from the PSST requiring him to submit certain documents, but he was hesitant because uh, I think they have issues that must be sorted out. But they appeared before us and they presented their municipal policy statement. Okay. Yes, uh, folks. You see, right, honor, right. Honor, honorable Musasisi, why judiciary? And I'm happy the, the, the minister is here. Minister of Constitutional Affairs. Why judiciary has not given you his budget, their budget? Because you you have refused to go by what they have told you. That is a constitutional vote. Yes. Right, Honorable Speaker, for purposes of transparency and uh, the Honorable Minister Musa Sizi, who is a very honest man, knows this. The Ministry of Finance sets a ceiling for the judiciary. The ceiling would subject the vote for the judiciary to substantial budget cuts. The judiciary explained to them that that was contrary to the law. And they still insisted that the judiciary should submit its budget to the PSST. The problem with that is this. The PSST cannot, the, the permanent secretary to the judiciary, cannot feed the figures of the judiciary into the system for the Minister of Finance because there's a ceiling. So his figures can, cannot be reflected in their system. And the minister knows this. They are implementing an illegality, the same illegality they want to impose on uh, uh, the parliamentary commission. And, and, and that's a statutory vote. If the president has approved the budget of judiciary, I don't see why really uh, PSST should come and say he's cutting the... And we've just passed a bill, an act here. There, there is an act where we agreed we should increase the number of judges. We are supposed to have two branches of court of appeal. We are supposed to have a court of appeal in Mbarara, a court of appeal in Nigulu, where the minister comes from, in Nigulu. So if, if they are asking for an increment of money, and it has been approved by, by, by the president, we need to see how to support judiciary. Because you are the same people complaining of backlog, backlog. And then you're not supporting the institution. Go ahead and lay your documents. Madam Speaker, as uh, I had earlier asked, for support to have the volume three draft estimates, I now wish to lay the, the draft estimates of revenue and expenditure, recurrent and development for financial year 2024-2025 under volume three, state-owned enterprises and public corporations. I beg to lay. Thank you. Uh, Madam Speaker, I wish to lay a list of accounting officers for financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. Yes. The minister has laid the list of accounting officers. 
You are not a speaker. I've been given it. My question is, over the years, as you led the list of accounting officers, I hope this time you are going to implement what you have laid. Because uh, we need that commitment. We have had issues here with some accounting officers. Recommendations of parliament have been made, but uh, no action taken. In the same vein, Madam Speaker, I see the Minister of Justice has stepped out. We, As we consider bills and uh, all these laws we passed, Madam Speaker, some time back, we tasked government to examine all the laws we have passed that do not have regulations. regulations. And the uh, Honorable Minister of, uh, of uh, Justice okay. here, mentioned uh, one of the acts and said one of the reasons why sometimes police goes overboard over the public, uh, over POMA, is because of lack of regulations. So maybe as he lays all these and as we trans uh, uh, approve and make laws, we need commitment to hear government to tell us how far that exercise has gone of making sure that every bill that we have has got regulations. To hear Thank the you. people to implement it. Uh, Honorable government, you've had the issue of regulations. Please go ahead and lay. Honorable Musasisi, the member is just asking for something simple. That as you lay your, your list, the house hopes that you don't make changes. That the people that have been recommended by this house not to be accounting officers are being considered. So that's all they are asking for. Uh, Madam Speaker. You keep your call. Henry, keep your call. <laughs> Madam Speaker, all the documents I'm laying here will be property of this house. I want to beg the indulgence of colleagues that I lay the documents, then I take on the issues after. Madam Speaker, thank you very much. I now wish to lay the statement of Malitia. Did you finish the accounting officers? Yes, I lay. Okay. I now wish to lay the statement of Malitia commit commitments of government for financial year 2024-2025 and performance of Malitia commitments for financial years 2022-23 and 23-24. I beg to lay. Thank you. I beg to lay a statement attesting the reliability and completeness of the budget estimates of revenue and expenditure for financial year 2024-25. I beg to lay. Thank you. I beg to lay the certificate of gender and equity, and equity compliance for the draft estimates of revenue and expenditure for financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. I beg to lay the certificate of compliance of the annual budget for financial year 2023-2024. I beg to lay. I beg to lay certificate of financial implications for the estimates of revenue and expenditure for financial year 2024-2025. I beg to lay. Thank you. I beg to lay a report on public debt, grants, guarantees, and other financial liabilities 
for financial year 2023-2024. I beg today. I beg to lay the draft reports and financial statements for the for petroleum fund for the period ended 31st December 2023. I beg to lay. I beg to lay on the table the certificate of climate change responsiveness of the national annual budget for financial year 2024-2025. This one I had laid earlier, but for purposes of compliance, I have to lay again. I beg to lay the consolidated disposal report for financial year ended 30th June 2023 for Government of Uganda missions abroad. I beg to lay. No. I beg to lay a report on money recovered as a result of the recommendations of the Auditor General's report. I beg to lay. No. I beg to lay the macroeconomic development and fiscal prospects for financial year 2023-2024. I beg to lay. I beg to lay the Treasury Memoranda on the Public Accounts Committee, Commissions, Statutory Authorities, and State Enterprises for financial year 2021-2022. I beg to lay. Okay. I beg to lay the supplementary Treasury Memoranda on the report of the Auditor General for Financial Year 2020-2021. I beg to lay. Thank you. I beg to lay a Treasury Memoranda on the report of the Public Accounts Committee Local Government for the Financial Year 20. 21, 20, 22. This is... Order, what? The minister who has got experience. Thank you, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker, I've just recognized a honorable minister who has been reported to you and to the house that is actually very sick and could not take responsibility on the comments here. So are we, is it in order to keep that statement on record when the honorable, honorable minister has appeared? Honorable, honorable shadow minister of finance, I mean of health. Uh, is a veterinary doctor. Is a veterinary doctor. Nobody. Anyway, I I cannot blame you, because you're not a medical doctor. You're a veterinary doctor. Nobody has reported. Honorable Muruli as somebody who is sick. Nobody. So that you you are not in order really to to say that it was reported like that. Uh, I've not given, you right I, I have speaker. not given you my. No, I was responding to I your have, remark. No, you are not supposed to respond to my remark. You are the sit. declared. Please sit. 
You know, you don't use your size to grab a microphone and, and think you should. Can we have the documents late? Yes, Dr. Bedi. Right, Honorable Speaker. I just want to Can you remember sit? to clarify because I don't know him among the veterinary doctors. So I, 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 would, I would prefer that he states his profession very well and goes on the record. I, I, I've not given you time to sit. I mean to talk. Honorable members. Honorable members. In the public gallery this morning, in the public gallery this morning, honorable members, we have students and teachers from Makai Memorial College, Natete. They are represented by Honorable Mukasa Aloshas, Gold, and Honorable Malende. Are you here, the MPs? You're most welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Honorable Minister, go ahead. Uh, you are not a minister. Can we receive the documents? Can you sit? Can you sit? Madam, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in compliance with the requirements under Section 13 and Article 155, <laughs> I wish to lay on the table the Treasury Memoranda on the report of the Public Accounts Committee, Local Governments for Financial Year 2021-2022, Volume 1, Covering Cities and Municipalities. I beg to lay. Thank you. What? In the same vein, I lay on table the Treasury Memoranda on the report of the Public Accounts Committee, Local Governments for the Financial Year 2021-2022, Volume 2, covering votes 801 to 867. I beg to lay. Please lay. Uh, I beg to lay on table the Treasury Memoranda on the report of the Public Accounts Committee, Local Governments for Financial Year 2021-2022, Volume 3, Covering votes 868 to 930. I beg to uh, Honorable members, please listen to, to the document I, being laid. I beg to lay on the table the medium term debt management strategy covering financial years 2024 2025 to 2027, 2028. I beg to lay. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay the semi-annual budget performance Honorable report. members, listen attentively so that if there is any document missing, you're able to raise it up and say this is missing. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay on the table the semi-annual budget performance report for financial year 2023-2024. It is in the parts, part one covers page one to page 1,141, and part two covers pages 1,142, to 2,283. I beg to Thank you. Please lay.
Madam Speaker, I beg No, this one. I beg to lay on the table. No, Madam, Madam Speaker, with your guidance, I think this one comes in the form of a motion. These are the tax bills. Yes, they come in a motion. Yeah. Mm. You can still go and, and 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 bring a motion for the first reading. Thank you, right honourable speaker, yeah. Madam Speaker. Let's finish. I this. beg to move that the bill entitled the Excise Duty Amendment Bill 2024. First bill of all, before we come into a motion, all the other documents are referred to a committee of budget for harmonisation. And scrutiny, and they should report back to the house by twentieth of May. Yes. Right, honourable speaker and honourable colleagues, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Excise Duty Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I beg to move. Is it seconded? Seconded. Seconded by Honorable Ibanda Odoi uh, Ayeku Ame. Ha. Even on Mara. By the ministers, Honorable Kasolo, Honorable Kasai, Honorable Mabira, Mama Mabira, Honorable uh, Minister of Finance, Elders. By the majority of the house, including a lawyer. Uh, Madam Speaker, the bill is accompanied with the certificate of financial implications. This is also important. And that is referred to the Committee of Finance. Those are tax bills that will help us get money for funding the budget. Uh, Madam Speaker and colleagues, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Stamp Duty Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time, and the bill is accompanied by the Certificate of Financial Implications. Thank you. Seconded? Yes. By MPND, by Government Chief Whip, by Honorable Kasolo, and others. I refer to the Committee of Finance. Madam Speaker and colleagues, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Tax Procedures Amendment, the Tax Procedures Code Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I beg to move. It's also accompanied by the Certificate of Financial Seconded. Seconded. My Honorable Solomon Ibanda, uh, this is Nathan uh, Omoding, Eric, a uh, professor and a neighbor. Uh, refer to the Committee of Finance. I beg to move that, Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the bill entitled... The neighbor is actually Honorable Sen. I was not calling Mariam. I beg to move a motion that the bill entitled the value added tax amendment bill 2024 be read for the first time. And the bill is accompanied by the certificate of financial implications. Thank you. Is that seconded? Loy, Solomon, Ayeko, Odoi, Aliek, eh, Honorable Hamson, Dennis Obua, Government Chief Whip, Honorable Kasolo, Honorable Wandasi. 
and Museveni and uh, Dr. Obuka. And uh, Chairman Budget is here. Chairman Budget has also seconded it. Refer to the Committee of Finance. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, I beg to move a motion that the bill entitled the Income Tax Amendment Bill 2024 be read for the first time. And it's accompanied by the Certificate of Financial Implications. Seconded by Honorable Foxy Habati Puire Esenu Peter. Singiro, Foreign Affairs, Health, Oima, Busia. Thank you. And it is referred to the Committee of Finance. Uh, Madam Speaker, I beg to move a motion that the bill entitled the Supplementary Appropriations Bill 2023 be read for the first time and it's accompanied Appropriation the Appropriation Bill 2020. The Supplementary Appropriations Bill 2023. And this is accompanied by the Certificate of Financial Implication. Is that seconded? And whoever is not standing, then why are you here today? You're here for that appropriation. So when I see anybody sitting, I ask myself, eh? Honorable Zijan, Emigo, uh, Peter, uh, Geoffrey, uh, Isodo, uh, Catechist. The appropriation bill is supported by the whole house. And I want to tell you, honorable members, from today, you need to take this process very seriously. Very, very seriously. Because this is when you're going to know which money is going where. This is a national cake that you must be distributed. So if you're going to sit back and say, I don't mind, then tomorrow you come crying to the committee of, of, of budget, put a road in my place. This time, no business of distributing roads, the hospitals at committee. No business of distributing. Because people who are not in those committees tend not to benefit. Let's distribute the national cake to the whole country. And you people must be involved. And government chief whip, your ministers keep off on a budget day. Then they start going to the cabinet and say, they removed my money. Where were you when they removed your money? All of you should be here to pass this budget. Uh, Madam Speaker, I am as in conclusion, and and the appropriation bill is referred to the committee of budget. Yeah, budget. Your bill is there, Madam Speaker. I wish to conclude by informing the House briefly about what the budget for financial year 2024-25 contains. Madam Speaker, the theme for, 20, for financial year 2024-2025 budget remains full monetization a procedure here of speak. the Ugandan economy. There's a procedure matter, but before I take on the procedure matter. Thank you, right. Before I take on the procedure matter, we have some guests uh, in the VIP gallery. We have staff, a delegation of staff from the Directorate of Litigation and Compliance Services of the Senate of Kenya. 
and they include Miss Charity, the Senior Personal Secretary. You're most welcome. Miss Nelly Jara, you're most welcome. She's a senior legal clerk. And then Mr. Jonathan Brima, a legal clerk. You're most welcome. They've joined us to witness the proceedings today. Yes, uh, procedure. Thank you, Reverend Speaker. I have uh, meticulously followed the minister laying um, budgetary documents uh, in compliance to section 13 of the PFMA. Um, and I don't think I left out anything unmarked, uh, but I'd like to ask of the minister whether it was an omission that there was no compliance to um, uh, subsection 10 D, a statement of tax expenditures of government, which effectively speaks to intended exemptions. I have not seen that laid uh, before Parliament. Was that an omission or a commission? Secondly, I have uh, not had the minister laid down uh, um, in the compliance to section uh, 13, subsection 10, 10 um, if a statement of grants of local governments and any subventions for the financial year, three, um, compliance to subsection 10, um, Sub section 10A5, the plans for guarantees to be issued in the financial year. I have not heard that, whether it's an omission or the government does not intend to issue any guarantees. Right, Honorable Speaker? Will the minister clarify whether these are omissions or he'll come back with a corrigent at some stage to take us back to the same process? Honorable Minister. Madam. Speaker, I wish to appreciate the formal op. I had actually... He's a commission of parliament. And uh, who is now a commission of parliament, I had actually skipped the statement of tax expenditure, which I wish to lay on the table now. Thank you. That is under section 1310A. Uh, regarding loans, grants, Guarantees, I laid here a comprehensive document which has all that information. And was referred to the committee then. Uh, guarantees, loans, grants, we have it's the same, the, we have a comprehensive document which has all this information. Madam Speaker, the budget for financial year 2024-25 is anchored on the theme called full monetization of the Ugandan economy through commercial agriculture, industrialization, expanding and broadening services, digital transformation, and market access. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the total budget for financial year 2024-25 amounts to Uganda shillings 58 trillion, 340 billion, billion, 862 million, 552,130 shillings. Right, Honorable Speaker, the key priorities of the budget for financial year 2024 2025 are the following one, peace and security. Two, road maintenance and construction of a few strategic roads, as well as rehabilitation of the meter gauge railway and construction of the standard gauge railway. Three, electricity transmission and utilization of the existing energy stock. Five, four, investing in the wealth creation initiatives, including commercial agriculture, value addition through support to UDB, UDC, the Parish Development Model, Emioga, 
agriculture credit facility, support tourism, and support the skilling projects. Number five is the investing in the people of Uganda through social sector education, social sectors of education, health, water, and social protection. And lastly, manufacturing in order to grow the jobs for our, our people. Madam Speaker, I wish to thank you and the House for your indulgence and receiving this budget. And I wish to appeal for your support in this process until the 16th of May when we pass it. And I wish to pledge on behalf of the Minister of Finance, together with my colleagues who are here, Honorable Kasoro, Honorable Gorobi, and Honorable Matia Kasaija, that we shall be available to support this process through Parliament from the start to the end. I thank you, right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Musasisi. And, uh, and uh, as Parliament, we are committed to doing what we are supposed to do. We'll do our best for the good of this country. Yes, Sarah. Thank you very much, right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, we have now passed, I mean, the. Um, we have received the budget for the next financial year. However, right honorable speaker, sometime in this house, we discussed various reports from the accountability committees. And while visiting some of the districts like Terego, Abim, and also interacting with our own uh, local government leaders in Tororo, what has been brought to our what was brought to our attention is the challenge that the local governments are having. The what? issue of returning money, uh, right? Honorable, Honorable Speaker. Sarah. Yes. Why don't we have all these documents first laid on the table? Oh, I thought you had finished. No, we have not. Oh. I thought you had an order paper. Mm. Check your order paper. <laughs> okay, thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Yes. Can we have the documents laid? Item 5C. You want me to forget what I'm doing? First, don't let me have the documents laid. Item 5C, the National Planning Authority Annual Performance Report 2022-2020. Thank you, Honorable Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker. I'm moving in accordance with section 18, one and three of the NPA Act 2002 to lay on table the annual performance report uh, for the financial year 2022-2023. I beg to lay. Thank you. The, com the report is referred to the Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Item 5D. Proposal to pre-finance the reconstruction of the Masaka Mutukula Road, 89.5 kilometers, and rehabilitation of Nyendo Villa Maria Road, 11 kilometers, upgrading of the 3.5 kilometer access road to Uganda People's Defense Forces Barracks in Masaka, and access road to Masaka Industrial Park, 3.5 kilometers, and an additional scope of 28.5 kilometers for the upgrading of the Chikagati Kafunzo Road. Uh, Honorable Minister of Finance. Madam Speaker, I wish to lay on the table the proposal to pre-finance the reconstruction of Masaka Mutukura Road, 89.5 kilometers, and rehabilitation of the Nyendo Villa Maria Road, 11 kilometers, upgrading of the 3.5 kilometers access road to Uganda People's Defense Forces Barracks in Masaka and access road to Masaka Industrial Park, 3.5 kilometers, and an additional scope of 28.5 kilometers for the upgrading of the Chikagat Kafunzo Road. I beg to lay. 
on the table right on it. Thank you. In furtherance to Article 159, two of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda and Rule 155 of the Rules of Procedure, I refer this proposal to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on National Economy. Item 5E, the power sales agreement between Uganda and South Sudan for electrification of South what Sudan. Are, what are our members? I know you have issues. Why don't we first receive these documents? Then you bring up what you want to bring. Yes. Pursuant to Rule 31 of the Rules of Procedure, I want to invite the Minister of Energy to come and lay the agreement. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay a power sales agreement for the sale of power at the Uganda-South Sudan border towns of Nimule and Kaya between Uganda Electricity Transmission Company Limited and the South Sudan Electricity Corporation. Corporation, I beg to lay. Thank you. And in accordance to Rule 32.5 of the Rules of Procedure, the agreement stands refer to the Committee of Environment and Natural Resources for scrutiny and report back. Item and, five. And, and, and really, much as is going to the Committee of Natural Resources, and this is uh, an agreement, I would also interest legal. Our interest legal department, legal committee, also to look at this agreement jointly. Yes, next. Item 5F Action Taken Reports, pursuant to Rule 220 of the Rules of Procedure, F1. On the nation on the nationwide electricity connection projects. Honorable members, pursuant to rule two two zero of the rules of procedure, where we are supposed to get the actions taken on on what was raised or on a report. I now invite the Minister of Energy, Minor Development to table a report on the action that has been taken. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay the statement by the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development on the status of electricity connection projects, March 15th, 2024. I beg to lay. Thank you, refer to the committee of Environment and Natural Resources for scrutiny and verification. And this is where we, uh, the oversight role comes in. If the minister is saying they have connected the power in Nyendo, the committee should be able to go and check whether it is really true. It shouldn't be a paper response. Next. Item 5F2, uh, action taken report on responses to parliamentary resolutions on the 25th annual report of the Human Rights Commission for the year 2022. Pursuant to Rule 220 of the of Rules of Procedure, and I invite the Minister of Constitutional Affairs to table the report. And we'll refer it to the committee. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay the action taken report arising from the responses to the recommendations made by the Committee on Human Rights on the 25th Annual Report of the Human Rights Commission for the year 2022 in accordance with Rule 2220 of the Rules of Procedure of the Parliament of Uganda 2021, I beg to lay. 
Thank you, refer to the Committee of Human Rights and Legal. Legal, I want you to interest yourself in this report. Yes. Uh, Honorable Chibombi, I mean uh, Seungu. By the way, I had a report this morning from the Banyaranda in Uganda, uh, and the Banyaranda headed by a senior Munyaranda member of parliament, Honorable Seungu. They have a petition. And they will be having that petition on the floor next week. Madam Speaker, you're right. And there are very many hovering around here. So, but I will represent all of them. Madam Speaker, I was I wanted to seek your guidance from the 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 the, the road they have talked about going to Commission National Economy. The road they have given, and the, the ministers of financial partition, because Madam Speaker has allowed me, the road from Nyendo. To Bukalasa is tamaked, but he had challenges when the road Katonga broke up. But there's a very serious road from Bukalasa to Gomba, which is just 35 kilometers. And I don't know why they are not including that road. I met Madam, Madam Speaker, the Director Unra. When you look at the money they have spent on this small Madam road, it would be used to, to it would have been saved by constructing a Tamaka road. So my prayers, if permitted, I would wish to say that uh, the road from Uvira, from Buk Nyendo should be tamaked up to Gomba because it's the shortest cut where there's a problem along Masaka. So I will pray that when I go to the National Economic Committee, I will raise my issues. And as you seek for this road, attention to be should be given to Vira Maria. Kalungu, Chamuriwa, Gomba Road. It will solve all, all problems. And already Katonga along that area, Madam Speaker, is broken. And yet UNRWA is going to repair Katonga. Then why don't you work on the same road? Because the main road, when you go to Bukoma and Simbi, Sembabule is stomached. From Sembabule to Gomba, it is stomached. Then that small part where my constituents also benefits. Madam Speaker, new districts with no Tamaka roads should be given some attention. Creation of new districts. And you don't give me a simple Tamak. In my courses, the only Tamak I have is one Catholic, built a small Tamak from the main road to a Catholic church. That's the Tamak we have. So if that road is given attention under this loan, it would... If... Madam Speaker, the Antonde district has only five kilometers of tarmac. It's five. And we've been a district since 2006. So as I come on, Honorable, Honorable members, now when you start saying the Antonde has five, uh, me, I don't even have a quarter. But I'm not complaining. But Madam Speaker, as you allowed, in a good spirit, the owner of Kasuru is from that region. He knows the road I'm talking about. The owner of Matthias Impuga knows the road I'm talking about. It is just the, the main road from Vira Maria to Gomba, and the distance is small. Why do you go for a small road of 11 kilometers, yet would you cover around 45 kilometers, 60? And it is advantageous once the road along Masaka is broken. So don't play with the Kalungu, owner minister. I, I, I think, uh, Honorable Minister, you have something to say. Thank you very much, Let, Honorable. Let's get a response, then I And I thank you. Honorable Song for raising that matter. Of course, there are so many untamaked roads in the country. But because of the limited resources, we have to, to sequence. So Masaka region has now gotten an opportunity for Mutukula, Masaka Mutukula Road. And these are the uh, stretches, like uh, the one that connects the Balaks and the Villa Maria and the Chitagat. So with the time, because this is not a loan, but it's a pre-financing. So with the time, if resources allow, we shall work on that, on, the, on that piece of road. 
Sudah. Mana Roman bos? You had other minutes and saying we do it in the first, first out. Procedure? Yes, there was a procedure, but I didn't. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, on three different occasions in this house, I have, I have raised to the Ministry of Works a very serious matter where UNRWA poorly designed a road in Gulu, stretching from Bank of Uganda to Custom Corner, and as a result of this poor design, so many lives have been lost. Right, Honorable Speaker, almost daily we are having accident on that section of the road. And the Honorable Minister repeatedly stood up here making commitment that he would dispatch a team to assess, redesign, and work on this road. Right, Honorable Speaker, it is painful. We are losing lives. We have repeatedly said this, and the and government has committed. But it's, it pains when every time we speak about it and we don't see any action being taken. Right, Honorable Speaker, would it not be procedurally right for you to now direct that action be taken immediately and this road be worked on so that we stop losing lives weekly and the ac accidents that we have almost daily? Thank you. Thank you so much. I cannot make an order when I'm not sure whether there is money or not. Because truth be told, we need the road to be worked on. But we need to determine whether we have the finances to that effect. And maybe the minister needs to report back to us on that. Dr. Rulume. Thank you. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. I say Dr. Lulum, and then I come back. So, members, you've gone to matters Thank of you. national importance. Thank you. Ah. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much, right, Honorable Speaker. When you mentioned Dr. Lulum and uh, there is another doctor. Uh, uh, he wants to kill himself first, that is a doctor. <laughs> Let him first kill himself, that is a doctor. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, uh, for this opportunity of putting the record right. Uh, right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, uh, right from the days back when Uganda had one university, there was a course that the best 10 students would be admitted to. And that was none by the, but the pharmacy course. And they would go to the pharmacy school, 10 of which, two of the 10 had to be girls. I was not bright, but I also happened uh, to join <laughs> just because maybe I passed. So right honorable speaker and members, I'm a registered pharmacist and the registration number is 466, 466. Registered as the Dr. Batua Timothy Lusala. Congratulations. And of course, you, you know, in the medical field, different people specialize in different areas, the teeth, the eyes. For us, we specialize in the medicine. So in Kenya, Uganda, USA, and some other countries where pharmacy is clinical, we go with the title. So in Uganda, we registered that way. And that is my registration number. I was registered in 2006. So I've experienced spanning over 20 years, is it? Oh, about to be 20 years. Oh, yeah. So uh, congratulations. Thank you very much, Dr. Nagos. So I'm not a vet. I'm not a, a Musa of Usoro. Yes. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, with the Minister of Finance here, I would like to address you on a matter of double taxation on the part of private medical practitioners. The ninth parliament had an amendment in the taxation bills. And in casting wide nets of taxation, they included professionals, including the medical, the pharmacists like Dr. Batua, 
including lawyers, among those professionals in private practice who are supposed to pay trade licenses. These professional businesses pay professional um, taxes, operational taxes, in order to operate their private facilities, including the lawyers. The lawyers and the pharmacists, right, Honorable Speaker, the lawyers and the pharmacists challenged this, this provision successfully, and the Attorney General directed that they should be exempted from paying trade licenses because they are not mercantile traders. And it left the medical professionals also to fight court battles. Right, Honorable Speaker? Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I, I beg for your attention, but two men, uh, two gen honorable gentlemen. Uh, Before, No, I'm not sitting there. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, you. sorry, I'm serving the whole house. Thank you very much, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker, the the professional business people are not mercantile traders. Those include the lawyers, pharmacists, including us medical practitioners who are practicing in private. But now, that provision subjected all those professionals to paying trade licenses, yet they pay operational licenses to their professional bodies. That would be double taxation. That the pharmacists and lawyers successfully challenged that, that provision. It should have cascaded to the rest of the government agencies which have been asking for these taxes yes. from those professional bodies operating privately. I would like, through you, Right Honorable Speaker, to demand of government how a provision that has been successfully challenged in court does not cascade to the various professionals that we are subjected to paying uh, double taxes. While they are paying their pro professional taxes through the operations of their facilities, they are also being subjected into paying trade licenses, yet they are not mercantile traders like traders of rice, sugar, and so on. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg your indulgence to delve into this matter, and we ask for justice. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, government. Finance. There's information from your chairperson. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues. I want to appreciate the colleague who's just put his issues very straight and clear. This is a matter that needs our attention to have a final resolve because there are other sectors which I'm privy to that have been affected. And some of the colleagues at Rone Bokatesh will attest to this. Like uh, the customs agents pay customs license. And therefore they also protested to be asked to pay trading license. And indeed what the colleague is saying, that professional bodies that have paid somewhere, monies that eventually end up in the coffers of government, should not be taxed again. So I agree with you, but... I would request that through you, Honorable Speaker, if they may put their cases straight, then we can give them attention, especially this during this uh, process. Thank you. Honorable Minister, the issue of double taxation. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I do remember in the 9th Parliament, together with Dr. Ruruma and the others, we debated this matter and uh, I am close to the views he's 
putting on, on the floor of parliament now, I think, as the chairman of the finance committee has said, since we are now in the season, let's go in the committee, discuss this matter, and we'll report back to parliament. Thank you. Foreign Affairs. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity of raising a matter <coughs> of national importance that really requires. Uh, we, we are still on the budget. You will raise yours. Elijah, are you on the budget? Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, mine is regarding the matter of the loans and the roads that the minister laid. This financial year, Right Honorable Speaker, we did pass money for the construction of Bulamuti Kamuli Bukungu Road. But unfortunately, Right Honorable Speaker, because Minister of Finance delayed to bring the loan to this house, it came to the end. The agreements were ready by UNRWA, but somehow within the Minister of Finance, that, that contract agreement for the construction of that road has not commenced. So we're again having to budget and put this road back, back in the next financial year. Could the minister do these things in a timely manner? Because we have killed one year without any work, the contracts, the, the contracts signed, but because there is some challenge in the Minister of Finance, I want the minister to take it up. I, I raised, additionally, I have seen, thanks Honorable Minister of Finance and Honorable Kasolo, that you approved a loan for Kumi Serere Casillo Road. The, I've seen it in the budget. I've seen it in the budget policy framework, but the loan has not yet come here. We may run into the same problem. When are you bringing the loan to this house? Because we don't want to waste one year without work like it has happened to this one of uh, Kamuli Bukungu. Thank you, Rector uh, But I think there is also a problem when these loans are approved. They are not used as per what they have been approved to do. At the end of the day, we are paying a lot of interest. That's why you find vote 130 has a lot of money being paid out because of delayed procurement, delayed compensation of pubs and that kind of thing. We end up paying a lot of money. So we should be able to get loans when we are ready to start work. Otherwise, we are wasting a lot of money, paying interest, commitment fees, and that kind of thing. Honorable members, we've not completed on the budget. Before, before I have a motion moved, then we are, we are not complete. So, Earlier on, the Honorable Minister laid the appropriation bill, which is part of the documents that were laid, and we have referred it to, to the Budget Committee, and that is under Section 13, 3 of the Public Finance Management Act. The Honorable Minister now should formally table the bill for the first reading the Appropriation Bill 2024. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I beg to move that the bill entitled the Appropriations Bill 2024 be read for the first time. I beg to move. Is the bill seconded? by the government chief whip, by Fox. <laughs> I want to... Council Yusuf, you're not supporting your appropriation. Appro... Your boss is sitting. Are you here on your own? It is supported by the whole house. Appropriation Bill 2024. 
those ones who don't support can go out. You have reasons for what? For not supporting. Okay, state your reason. So that I, I, people in Intunga should know yes. that you did not support the budget. Madam Speaker. So she should not expect any service. I have only two fundamental reasons why I'm not supporting them, the bill. The first one, when you read on the roads that we are appropriating here today, the people of Western Uganda we are breeding, we have been marginalized by everyone, and we are not happy. If it is a government project, they will say, ah, ah, those people are already sorted. If it is an appointment, they will say, ah, those people are already okay. If it is a road, they will say, ah, ah, the Western an, Ugandans, they are okay. There is an order from Gilbert. And Madam Speaker, as Westerners... Uh -huh. There is an order from Gilbert. Thank you, Red House Speaker. Red House Speaker, the Honorable Yona. Musinguzi. Musinguzi. Of Ntungamo. Thank you, Red House Speaker. Red House Speaker, Honorable Yona. Something which is terrible. Red House Speaker, looking at the sharing of cakes in this country, looking at the list of people serving in ministers, the family secretaries, the army generals, the police, Pro Pro everyone. Honorable members. Speaker. Honorable members. 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 I think that was a light moment. Honorable members. Honorable members. I don't need to know. I don't need. I don't I don't need to know why you're not supporting the bill. It's your choice. And I don't need it on the handset. If you have issues on implementation, ours is to pass. On Im implementation is not on us. So when you bring those things, I don't want us to start going into regional tribal and that kind of thing. Let's not go there. Me, I, me, I'm a speaker. I'm not from Western Uganda. Okay? Government chief whip is here, all the way from a certain village called uh, a jury. Okay? <laughs> Don't tell us about Balalo. Uh, uh, chairman budget. Chairman budget. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable. I rise on, on the subject matter of the budget for the coming financial year. Right, Honorable Speaker, you did mention that issues at times come to the committee to provide hospitals and so on, and others who are not in the committee are at a loss. Now, right Honorable, right, Honorable Speaker, let's get to know that the right provisions of the law state that parliament will do oversight of all the funds approved. At the same time, right honorable speaker, it becomes so complicated to do the monitoring in the oversight when we are just lumping the monies. I give an example. The entities provide by the technocrats money for roads, but we are providing a budget for a financial year that means you must have a mention of which roads are supposed to be done in the financial year. So that when you mention, you must justify why has it to be done according to uh, the Munyarwanda, that they have left a certain section of the road. It must be justified at that point of the budget. Why you are doing this road to Kalungu why you are not doing the road from Bukungu to Kagwara? It must be clear. If we are going to do health centers, tell us how many health centers are you going to do? And what's the location? 
If you are doing a school, tell us we need the money for classrooms. How many classrooms and where? And why? Where are you putting the classrooms in Bukedia? And you are not putting it in Tungamo. So you must justify. Why are you every day putting health centers in Otuke? Every year you are adding Otuke. And others don't have. So uh, if you are doing uh, boar holes, how many boar holes are you making? And where? Uh, so that it's during the process. We don't uh, get people like Yona crying from here. You go to the sector. Uh, I receive it, right, Honorable. Thank uh, you for my offer. Honorable uh, Chair, uh, that is corruption. Honorable uh, Chair. Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, I want you to listen. It is in this same house, it is in this same house where there was a complaint that all the roads, all the hospitals that were given were for only members in those committees. We are saying we should have a list. We should have the names of hospitals, of schools, but it must cover the whole country. Let the roads not only go to Bukedea, because the chair comes from Bukedea, because the speaker comes from Bukedea, because the, the Minister of Finance comes from. Let it be to the whole country. We shall have a list, but national in character so so thank you right so colleagues let's pay much attention because even the budget as per the law is supposed to indicate the outputs outputs and the worker plans that means the person in the finance cannot say today we are not releasing money for a certain road and yet you have approved the worker plan so unless what we are doing here is just a, 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 a just a showbiz, so we must work according to the plans. So the work plans must come, the, the recruitment plans must be there. As such, the money is up is appropriated and released according to the plans. Right, Honorable. Allow me, according to the law, declare my gift, which I've received from Honorable Yona. It's, uh, it's just 3,000 Kenya shillings, <laughs> which is enough for me only. Thank you, uh, Right uh, Honorable. Honorable members. Honorable and, members. And Right Honorable. Why, why I'm citing this soon, I may to be joined by members. Because now members, wherever they meet me, my health center, exactly. my school, you have not given me a school. So I'm just a chair of the budget, but all the allocations must be done at the sector budgets, at the municipal, ministerial policy statements, and you bring the issue we appropriate and has to be done in the financial year. I beg to move. Thank you, honorable members. I have a letter. I have a letter from to all members of parliament and staff, parliamentary agriculture policy. The letter is an invitation. The agriculture policy of parliament is scheduled to hold Easter carols and whole communion service today, 28th March 2024, in Parliament Conference Hall at 4.30. Presided over by the Right Reverend Huntington Mutebi, Assistant Bishop of Kampala Diocese, the purpose of this letter is kindly to invite you to attend the above-mentioned function. Signed by Honorable Obua Dennis Hamson, MP, Government Chief Whip, and a Chairman, Council, Parliamentary, Anglican Chaplaincy. So you're invited today at 4.30. And uh, Honorable members, Honorable Shaggy, we refer the appropriation bill to your committee and you must report back to this house. 
as per the dates that have been given to you. So meaning you people have to work very hard and have the budget here. Uh, that said, yes, Sarah. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, it hurts. For this house, for appropriate funds. And then the funds are not utilized by local governments because of certain contradictions or challenges within government systems. The local governments have resources to recruit staff, but they cannot recruit. The Minister of Public Service was here, unfortunately, has walked up. We visited Abima Zuwopa, we visited Terego, we also while interacting with my own district leaders in Tororo, this matter was raised. They have the money. Some of them have even gone through the process. The money is going to be returned. So, right honorable speaker, we need to support local governments. This is where service delivery is. And without staff, they cannot do that. But right honorable speaker, I also have an issue about a commissioner who went on radio to accuse this parliament or members of parliament saying that we received money for LOCs, 60,000, 40,000 for parishes. People have been calling me, right honorable speaker, asking for me to give them their facilitation. Right honorable speaker, we have handled matters here of people misusing social media and other media houses. This commissioner, the Honorable Solomon Siluan, needs to come and explain to this house why he had to go on radio to raise this matter, saying that members of parliament were given money for LOCs. You asked us to go and mobilize, right honorable speaker, for NRM. You did not give us money. That I have 60,000 for every LOC, for honorable children. members. So, right honorable, speaker. honorable members, there are things that should be administrative in nature. That is NRM issue. Don't bring NRM issue into the house. Huh? That is something that can be solved administratively. And listen, that is something that should be that should be handled administratively. Dr. Tango Doy has been giving money to the structures. Isn't it true? So you, you leave issues of NRM. Don't involve everybody into NRM issues. Honorable members, we are going for Easter all day. I wish you the best of the Easter holiday. I now adjourn the house to second April. Thank you.